Hi, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead. And thank you so much for joining us for part two of Jacob's Ladder. We are gonna pick up where we left off. So if you have not seen the first video, please go to the link below. All right, I have six rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So single, double, single, double, single, double. And it is time to change colors. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let me take this stitch out. So I have five double crochet. One, two, three, four, five. I have one more to do. And I'm only gonna do the first part of it. So loop over, grab it, and pull through two. That leaves two loops on my hook. And I'm going to cut that yarn. Oops, scissors didn't work. Just like that. All right, now I am going to take my next color, which is white, because remember, every color alternates with white. And I'm going to make a loop. There we go. Make a loop. And pull that through the two loops that were on your hook. Give it a little tug, tighten it up, and put a single crochet. Now that gives you these two tails. I'm going to tie them together in a knot. So once and twice. Now, as you heard before, I weave in all my ends. I don't like to leave these ends hanging there that I have to deal with later. So I am going to uh, make a big loop there. I'm gonna go down here and pull those two loops up. All right, so both of them, and pull them so they're closer to where I am crocheting. And the first one I'm gonna weave in is the blue one, and it's the color that I just used. So I am going to weave the blue one around my stitches. So I just weave it in and out. I like to use this double crochet stitches that I had, and just keep pulling it through. The next stitch, pull it through and keep on going. And one more. Can get two, two loops on there. <laughs> well, that'll do. And pull it through. going to give me trouble. Just use one. <laughs> it's not letting me do two. All right. So I wove that tail through the blue because that's what I was using was blue. Cut it off. And that leaves me the white one. I'm going to pull it all the way up to that white row. There we go. I have successfully changed colors. So I chained one. Now I'm gonna turn, and just like I showed you on that chain stitch, you're only doing the back rows, but you wanna make sure that that is on top of your stitch. And I think it's a little easier to use now that you can see different colors, but that was one. And I'm going to just keep pulling it across the top of my stitches, and then I won't have to weave anything in. Two. Usually I do five, but this tail is a little short. I'm not sure I will get five out of it. Three. Oh, I missed part of it. Pull that back out. I want it completely on top and that little one went down. All right, back loop. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to cut off that little bit. All right, I have woven in the end. You really can't see it on the blue. You can't see it on the white. And I am going to continue this pattern. So you're gonna do your single crochet going across. And so we have six stitches, six chains. And at the end of this one, I'm gonna show you something different. Don't panic, I'm just gonna show you how to start connecting all these loops. All right, so continue going across. You're gonna have six single, six chain, 
six single, six chain. I just finished the first row of white and that was single crochet going across. I'm going to chain two because we're doing double crochet next and turn. I am only going to do these first six stitches. So let's do six stitches and then I'll show you what we do different. two, three, four, remember just back loops, five, and six. All right, now I am going to show you how to weave in all of these loops and this pattern will finally make some sense to you. So what I do is I make a big loop because I don't want my stitches to fall out. All right, I always do the loops on a double crochet row where I've only done the first six stitches. So it always looks like this. Now the first time you do it though, it's gonna look a little different. So you're going to turn your work sideways. And this first loop was only four stitches and then six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, going on up. You're going to grab that first loop and twist it. If anything, that's the most complicated. And then take the next loop that is after it and push it through. Now you have a loop on your right finger. Go and find the next loop and push it through that loop. Now you have another loop on your finger and you're just taking the next loop and pushing it and grabbing the next one. Push it and grab it. Push it and grab it. Push it and grab it and then the white one. Now, let me show you what that did. From here, you pull it. All right, and there is your first Jacob's Ladder going that way. So let me show you again. Now the trick is this one you have to turn it. If you don't and you just start weaving, it's going to be bunched up at the bottom. So grab that little four chain with your two fingers and turn it away from you and put your finger in it. It's gonna be a little tight, but only for a second. Then take that next loop and push it through that turned one. And then it's just a process. Make sure you don't get them mixed up in order. We're taking the next loop and the next loop and going on through it. And I really like doing the chain loops here, the, the Jacob's Ladder part, because it starts to make it look like a blanket instead of like a bunch of stitches with a whole lot of gaps. All right, and there it goes. And it looks really neat when you start adding more colors. All right, we're gonna keep showing this because I know it can be complicated. Um, now the good news is if you mess up, you can take out those loops. It's going to be all right. Okay, so you take that four chain and twist it away from you. And then start pushing the first one. And then moving on up, making sure you get that next one. And keep pushing them through there. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna show you one more. Get to the end and pull it. And if some of these come out towards the top, it's fine. Okay, one more we're gonna show you. So grab that last one, twist it away from you, and put your finger in it. Then the first loop goes in it. And the next one, make sure there's no one. There you go, next one, next one. And keep on going. And pull. All right, so if we turn it this way, you can see what's starting to happen. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? All right, I am going to go across and do the rest of these loops, and I'll be right back with you. I have made all my loops going across. This is Jacob's Ladder, and so I've completely finished it going to the end. Now, while I was at it, I measured to see where I was because you really can't measure this type of blanket until the loops are in. And so from end to end, I am now 30 inches, which is exactly where I wanna be for this blanket. At this point, we are going to continue crocheting across the row. Now, remember we had a big loop there, so put your hook in there, tighten it up. Count the stitches in case any of them popped off. 
There's two, four, and six, and we are going to chain seven. Now, this can be a little tricky here. Uh, that, that stitch already popped off, so we're fine, but you're just gonna go to the next stitch and double crochet back loop only. We have one stitch started. I'm going to put the next five for a total of six stitches. And then we're gonna go around that Jacob's Ladder. I'm gonna show you how to do it. The last one had popped out already, but this one is still there. So we want six double crochet back loops only. All right, this guy's trying to pop out too. All right, let me show you. All right, so it's gonna look like this when you come up to that Jacob's Ladder. We get the last stitch in there. So same as before, you're going to chain seven. And now you need to look at this to determine where it starts. And right there's the chain, so your next stitch actually goes right there. All right, so continue this row. You're going to do six double crochet, back loop only, chain seven, and continue to the end of the row. I just finished doing that entire row. So I have a single crochet and a double crochet. Now I've gone through the first part of that double crochet and I'm going to cut my yarn so I can change the color. This is when I'm going to transition into my multicolored one. Uh, the hardest part is honestly finding the end. So I'm gonna dig around, see if I can find the center of this. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is this is a very, very thin one, about half the thickness of what I was using. So I use two of them at the same time. And I can see this is not gonna be easy finding the center. So I'm gonna end up with a big old hot mess, but that's the way it is. So I'm gonna find the end of this one and the end of the other one, and I'm gonna show you how I crochet two at once. That second skein wasn't too bad, but I was able to get two skeins, so they are side by side, and I found the end of each one. So I'm going to put those together. These are very, very thin. If they were to compare to the thickness of the rest of it, it's about half that. So if I use two, it's gonna come out equal. The other thing I like is I try not to have the same color. So this one is more the bluish next to the aqua. And as it goes on, the colors will change. And I like that. It gives more, more variation. So to use two, it's very similar. You're just going to put the loop on there. And it's a little trickier when you're crocheting. You gotta make sure that you always grab both of those loops. So grab both and you're gonna pull it through that last stitch that I had. I hold it with my right thumb and I tighten that little end that I still had. All right, so at that point, I'm going to take my new yarn, not the ends, the new yarn, and put one stitch in it. And then I can lay that down and I'm gonna tie these loose ends together. So I have one white one and two multicolored one. And I just put a knot in it, just like that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weave in the white one down through here and place the greenish multicolored one along the top. So I'm gonna do that next. I did two rows of the multicolored. I'm really liking this color combination. And now I'm at the end of that second row. So I am going to cut the tail and go back to white. So make a loop and pull it through those last two loops on your hook. Hold it with my thumb. Tighten it up, make a single crochet. And take the multicolored loops or multicolored yarn and the white yarn and tie them together. All right, this time I'm going to weave the multicolored into those stitches and I'm going to crochet two rows of white for a single crochet then double crochet, and I'll be right back. All right, this is the section of multicolored. So you're always gonna go with a solid, and then this section of multicolored, then a solid, then a multicolored. And since this one's a light one, 
the next six rows are going to be a dark one. And I know you're thinking that's really dark, but that is what's gonna make it pop. So at this point, all I'm going to do is to switch colors and do six rows of solid. And I'm gonna show you how to do the loops about partway through that. So six rows of dark. Now that we are getting into the swing of things, I'm gonna show you how to weave the ends in at this point. It's much easier than when you first start. Um, but I have six rows of light blue, and then I have the six rows of the transition. And I have just started to do the dark color. I have the first single crochet row finished, and I have just six stitches. So this is where you make a big loop, just so those stitches don't fall out. And I turn this sideways, just like that. All right, to do these loops from this point on, it's just a matter of finding that last loop and pushing the next one through. And I go through and I just keep pushing them in order until I get to that last one. And the last one I grab it and give it a pull. And there you go, that's Jacob's Ladder going on through. All right, let me do another one of those. So there's the last loop that I had and I'm going to push that one through and I just keep pushing them through until I get to the top. Once I get that last one, I pull. All right, let's turn it this way so you can see what it looks like. All right, and see how the different colors now, I just love that look. And so what you're going to do now is finish doing the six rows of the dark color, and then I want you to put this transition row in, and that'll be all that we are going to do for this week. So work on that and, and put some pictures below. I wanna see how we're doing. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share, and have a great week. Bye-bye.